Welcome back everyone. Today we learn about movement of substances. Let's start off with diffusion. Diffusion is the net movement of substances from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration down a concentration gradient. The characteristics of diffusion are as follows. Diffusion is a passive transport meaning it doesn't require energy. After particles are spread out evenly there will be no net movement as dynamic equilibrium is reached. The rate of diffusion is the fastest in gas followed by liquid and then solid. This is due to the arrangement of particles. Diffusion of one substance is not affected by concentration of others. Living organisms have special structures to increase surface area to volume ratio to increase rate of diffusion. Now let's see how diffusion occurs in plants and animals. In plants there is gaseous exchange between leaf and surrounding air via diffusion. During the day, carbon dioxide diffuses into the leaf and oxygen diffuses out. Whereas at night oxygen diffuses into the leaf and carbon dioxide diffuses out. In animals there is gaseous exchange in the alveolus via diffusion. Carbon dioxide from red blood cells diffuses out and oxygen from the air diffuses in. Next we have osmosis. Osmosis is the net movement of water molecules from a region of higher water potential to a region of lower water potential down a water potential gradient and across a partially permeable membrane. These are the characteristics of osmosis. Osmosis is a passive transport meaning it doesn't require energy. It is a special type of diffusion as it is specific to water molecules and partially permeable membrane must be present. Examples of partially permeable membrane include cell surface membrane, tonoplast, visking tubing, and cellophane bag. Substances that can pass through partially permeable membrane are water and gases. Water potential is the measure of tendency of water to move from one region to another. The higher the solute percentage, the lower the water potential. There are two types of solution, hypertonic and hypotonic. In hypertonic solutions it refers to a solution with lower water potential hence a higher solute concentration. In hypotonic solutions it refers to a solution with higher water potential hence a lower solute concentration. We will now take a look at the effects of osmosis on red blood cells and plant cells. If red blood cells are placed in a hypertonic solution, crenation occurs. Water leaves the cell via osmosis and membrane of RBC starts forming little spikes. The cell shrinks and becomes dehydrated, leading to cell death. If red blood cells are placed in hypotonic solution, hemolysis occurs. Water enters cell via osmosis and the lack of cell wall causes overexpansion of cell membrane. The RBC bursts and this causes cell death. If plant cells are placed in a hypertonic solution, plasmolysis occurs. Water leaves the cell via osmosis and the vacuole decrease in size. The cytoplasm shrinks away from the cell wall. If plant cells are placed in hypotonic solution, the cell expands and becomes turgid. Water enters cell via osmosis and the cell increases in size. Cellulose cell wall prevents the overexpansion of cell membrane by exerting an opposing pressure. Finally we will end of this video with active transport. Active transport is the movement of selected particles from a region of lower concentration to a region of higher concentration against a concentration gradient with the expenditure of energy. The characteristics of active transport are as follows. Active transport requires energy which is obtained from respiration. The cell membrane has carrier proteins that assist in active transport. Active transport in plants occurs during the absorption of ions and minerals from the soil which has a lower concentration, into the root hair cells which has a higher concentration. Active transport in animals occurs during the absorption of glucose or amino acids from intestinal lumen into the blood. That's all for today. Thank you for the effort to learn with me. Stay tuned for more interesting lessons. See you next time. Bye-bye.